today we have a nice clean canvas to work with but just like every haircut i like to start off by combing out the hair to kind of scope out what i have to work with and look for any imperfections now to start off this mid drop fade i'm going to come in with my clipper close to start off my bald line and the reason i like to use the clipper close first is because it makes it a lot easier to get rid of that first initial bald line because what a lot of barbers do um and even what i do sometimes is i come in with the trimmer and press it in first but it just kind of makes my job a little more difficult when i have to go ahead and get rid of that line so this right here is just a lot more efficient and a lot easier to work with so as you can see i'm trying to make that initial bald line the foundation of the haircut as clean as i can and now i'm going to come in with my trimmer right below that to bald out the rest of it and you'll notice with that trimmer i'm not taking it all the way up to the top of that bald line i'm kind of stopping where i left off with the clipper closed and i am using my low pros from babeless the new fx ones super sharp super fire if you guys would like a review on these clippers leave a comment down below and i'll be sure to go ahead and get that to y'all but as you can see they're eating through the hair like butter and this is my guy Wilmer man he has one of my favorite haircuts to do because his hair blends very nicely it's super dark when you bought out the bottom the skin is really light so the transition from the skin to the you know the darkness of his hair um is very clean very fire nice to record and film and now i'm gonna go ahead and use my shaver to get it a little closer to the skin and a lot of times when making barber content, the client that you choose, the person in the chair that you choose, is very important, man, because that's what is going to help you to do um, better in your post or to perform better if the client's hair is something that really stands out. So go ahead and take that into consideration when creating content for yourself as well. And now I'm going to come in with the lever open on my magic clips. And we're going up about a finger's width here still maintaining that drop shape that we established with our clipper closed now we're going to the back and connecting it to his right side which we have already done staying real consistent following our system following the process And now we're going to come in with our one guard open, doing that same exact thing, going up about a finger's width here. And what we're doing with these guidelines and really throughout the entire process um, of the fading is we're laying our foundation. We're laying the steps to get to that final outcome, right? So I came in bald, I came in open, now I'm one open, and then we're going to build up and blend down. Now we went ahead and grabbed our two guard. This is the biggest guard that we are going to use. Um, because last time I took down his hair to a four guard close. And I cut his hair, I believe, last week. Or the week before, whenever I did this haircut was. Um, so that two guard open should pretty bl much blend into the length on top. But you'll notice I'm not really trying to establish a guideline either. I'm kind of coming off the shape of his head. And now we're going to drop down to our one and a half closed. And we're going to start blending down. So a comment you guys leave down below pretty often is, Dre, man, when are you going to come do a class in my city? When are you coming near me? Well, I have some exciting news, man. Next month, January 14th in Dallas, Texas, I will be teaching alongside my guy Los Cut It and Taylor Cl Cuts at the Barber Plug Experience. All right. I'll put the flyer at the end of this video or actually right now. Um, and I would love for you guys to come through, man. I'm going to be teaching my first class at an official Barber Expo. So I'm going to make sure to bring the heat, bring as much knowledge and add as much value to you guys as possible. So if you guys are able to pull up January 14th, Dallas, Texas, the Barber Plug Experience, come watch me alongside others, do an amazing class and enjoy an amazing show full of competitions, um, networking, buy some cool products. But I'm also still in the hunt for a model for this class. So if you are interested or plan on coming to the show or better yet, live in Dallas, Go ahead and send me an email or hit me up on Instagram with a picture of your haircut. Um, and let's try to make something happen, man. I want to find someone with a cool head, hair texture, a cool style. So, go, again, go ahead and email me or hit me up on Instagram and let's make something happen. 
So we're still working with the half guard here, trying to blend out this line. Especially in the back, you'll notice it's a lot more condensed. There's a lot more dark spots. So I'm going back to my one guard here to go ahead and bring everything together. And slowly but surely, this blend is coming together very nicely. It's dropping towards the back, complementing his head shape. And now to get rid of the last line, we're going to come in clipper closed. And then gradually open up that lever as we move up within this fade. And you can already notice by tapping at that bottom line, the fade is already coming together nicely. So now we're going to use a lot of the corner of the blade to get into those dark areas and not risk the chance of taking the fade up any higher. So now we're going to go towards the back and do the same thing. And my camera kind of cut off, so it got rid of some of um, you know, the blending process. But the same thing that we did on the side, we did in the back. And now we're using the corner to get into those dark areas. Which is very helpful to make the blend look a lot more consistent and a lot more blurry. So you'll notice in that area behind the ear, a lot of times with jaw fades, that can be a very troubling area. So I'm putting a little more attention to detail there. And it's coming together nicely. And now to transition into the weight on top a little better, I'm going to go ahead and do some clip clipper over comb. And I like to do clipper over comb for, for anything above a one and a half. Um, because it's a lot more efficient, a lot faster, and I feel like it cuts a lot smoother than go, you know going back and forth between guards. So I'm coming in with that comb and flaring out slightly, and then I do have my lever open, and now I'm utilizing the corner of that blade a little bit more, and that blend is coming together very nicely. And it's always encouraging to get you know midway through the cut and everything start coming together the way that you want it to. Um, it's not a better feeling than that man because I know a lot of times we can finish haircuts and not be fully satisfied with how they came out So when when we're able to finish a client's haircut and we feel really proud of it Man, that's a great feeling and it makes for a great day as well And then we keep doing that on every client right and you do that consistently and you stack those little wins man It just builds that confidence And now we're gonna use our wall pro high vis to outline the vertical bar, but I noticed there were some dark spots on the right side of his fade. So I'm using this technique here that I learned from Shane and Craft, S Craft Blends, to get rid of those dark areas. Looking super clean. We got a clean blend on both sides. And now we're gonna go ahead and line up his hook. So I'm starting at the top of the hook and then I'll go to the bottom and meet those two points in the middle. And I haven't used these a lot in videos because I had broke my blade, but Wall looked out and sent me another blade. Um, and I'm not gonna lie to y'all, man, these are hitters. They're not my favorite for balling out, but when it comes to doing clean lines, um, bro, these right here are some hitters, man. So we're gonna look out for these in more videos. I definitely will be using them more. Now, same with his right side. We're gonna start at the top of the, the hook and then go to the bottom and, and meet those two points in the middle. And you can see the drop, especially on this right side, is looking super clean. Now we're doing some trimmer over combs to get rid of some bulk I see on his arch. And it's all in the little details. So I'm going back over and over trying to get it as clean as I can before we come in with the razor. And now we're going to get into the front lineup. And the reason I like to do the vertical bar and the arches first is because it makes it very easy to give the client a straight lineup because you have reference points on both sides. So now we're starting in the middle and moving towards his left, keeping it as natural as possible, but trying to get it as crispy as you can as well. And my guy Will here has a very, you know, easy hairline to work with, so there's not so much to do. Some people are just blessed with the gray hairline, and then, you know, sometimes it's people like me. It is what it is. But you'll see every time I go ahead and tap at the hairline, I go ahead and comb the hairs back down. So I can make sure I get all the overhanging hairs. So that way when the client goes home and showers and you know does his normal routine, his lineup still looks sharp and clean. And now we're gonna get into his beard. So I'm gonna go ahead and comb it out and frame out the bottom. Now my client recently shaved the bottom of his neck so there wasn't too much to do outside of straightening out that line. But I'm starting in the back of the beard to go ahead and sharpen that up. Being careful to not take it too far in. And now we're just going to straighten out the bottom. And 
And now we're going to go ahead and shave his neck. And like I said, there's not too much to do down here because he just recently shaved that as well. Same on the other side. Go ahead and clean up the back of the beard. And then the bottom of the beard. And I really enjoy reclining the client to line up the bottom of his neck because for me personally, oh man, when I have the client put their head all the way back while they're sitting up and lining up the bottom, I have to bend over a lot and it hurts my back. And I know this is just a more relaxing experience for the client as well. So if you're able to with your barber chair, always recline your client, um, you know, where you're at a point of the service where you can do that. So now I'm going to go ahead and use the razor. And with the razor, like I always say, I'm stretching the skin in the opposite direction of which I'm using the razor. So I'm coming towards myself with the razor. So I'm pulling the skin away from myself. And that stretches out the skin, makes it a lot easier for the razor to glide over it to avoid any cuts or irritation. So you'll see I'm getting rid of all that stubble, trying to sharpen everything up. And the razor work is really the cherry on top. So after you gave him a clean fade, a clean line, when you come in with that razor, we're just saucing it up, adding the last minute details. And now with the beard, I had him blow a bubble. And I started at the top and then the bottom of the beard. And I'm going to connect those two points in the middle. Very similar to what I do on the arch. And now we're just sharpening it up a little more. Shave the top of his cheeks. Those little hairs also make a big difference in how much that line pops as well. So don't neglect those. And now we're going to go ahead and line up his mustache, give you guys a little different view of the fade. Looking super blurry. But fam, this is how my client came in. And this is how he's left leaving, man. We gave him a super clean fade, clean lineup, cleaned up his beard as well. If this video helped you in any way, shape, or form, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. But like always, I appreciate you, and I will catch y'all next time. Peace.